1 Kings chapter 18, verse number 41. We'll read several scriptures, and then we're going to talk about the hand of the Lord. Verse 41, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, and he said it to his servant. He's actually in the position of labor. A lot of people don't realize that. He's actually not in a position of worship. In the ancient ways, that's the way a woman would position herself to give birth. Amen. It's nothing weird here, but it's, it's symbolic that through his ministry, he's about to birth something. That's why it says he squats and he's in his head between his knees. That was the ancient ways. Some third world countries still women do deliver that same way. So he's in a posture of something giving birth. Now him being a man, quite naturally, man can't, can't give birth. No matter what they try to tell you, they can't. And they're not meant to either. Praise the Lord. But he is in a position spiritually to give birth to something. Ooh, I could preach that right there. And he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, there's nothing. He said, go again seven times. Sometime when God begins to deal with you in life, you have to look more than once. You have to look more than once. When, when Moses saw the burning bush, if you go back and study it, the first time he looked, he, didn't, he turned away, then he looked again. Sometime when you deal with the miracle ministry, I don't care what the world say, I don't care how much they make fun of the news, you have to look yourself. Look again. Turn to somebody and say, look again, look again. Look. He told the man, his servant, to go look seven times. Can you imagine? Seven times. He said, go look. He said, I hear rain. And he goes and looks. He said, I don't see anything. He said, I hear rain. Go look. See, that's how the prophetic works. You hear it before you see it. You hear things. A prophet hears things in the spirit. He knows things in the spirit before people see it. Praise God. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a cloud out of the sea as the size of a man's hand. That's the proper translation. And he, and he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Make ready thy chariot, and go and get thee down, that the rain will not stop. And it came to pass in a little while that the heavens grew black with clouds and wind. There was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord, or the hand of Jehovah, was on Elijah. Somebody say, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord. was on Elijah. Please get this. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The unique thing about Elijah's ministry is that his ministry was not only that of a, of a prophet that would speak, but his ministry was full of miracles. God used him to raise the dead. Amen. And that's how God, I believe, in these last days, that's what God wants. We've seen that here in this ministry. God has used me to raise two people from the dead. But what is that? That's the hand of the Lord. So we see here that when he goes out and looks seven times, he sees something significant. He sees a cloud, the shape of a man's hand. Now, this is very, very powerful because there's symbolism, but there's a great meaning in it if we get it. We talked about it a little bit Friday, but for those who are new and didn't hear, we will elaborate a little bit. But he sees the hand of a, cl of a, a, a cloud, the shape of a man's hand. And he's looking from a great distance. He's looking, if you will, if you can use your imagination, if you've ever been to a beach or you've ever been on the, uh, on the ocean or on the shore, he looks way out, but he's in a high place. He's way up like on a mountain, and he's looking way out. And he looks way out, he begins to see something. The seventh time he goes to look, he goes the seventh time, and he sees something, a cloud. And the cloud is shaped like a hand. And the cloud is getting closer, so the hand is getting bigger and bigger. Not because the hand is getting bigger, it's because it's getting closer and closer. You ever seen that, right? You ever seen like an airplane in the air? If you go down here at the airport and you watch the planes, they way, they're way up in there, but as they get closer... Amen. It seems like they get bigger. They're not getting bigger, just getting closer. So this cloud, the shape of a hand, is getting closer and closer. Now, what I want you to realize, this was not just a cloud. It was actually God's hand in the cloud. 
it was almost like God had a glove on. And the hand of God now begins to reach toward the earth, begins to reach toward the prophet Elijah. And as the hand of the Lord hidden in this cloud supernaturally, I've seen that in dreams. I've seen the Lord reach toward me in a dream and his hand in a cloud. Oh, but I hope I got some people that believe God. And this hand comes. It's the, Lord, it's the hand of Jehovah, the, the hand of the Lord. And the moment that hand shows up, all of a sudden the sky turns black and it begins to rain. In this is a powerful picture because it had not rained. It was a drought for three years, over three years, but really three and a half years. But for three years, there was no rain. I mean, I can only imagine what it would be like if we didn't get rain for three years. I mean, almost the entire nation would become desolate. If we don't get rain for three or four months, we're in trouble. Can you imagine not just one year, not two years, but three years, 36 months and some change, no rain at all. So they are in a bad situation. The judgment of God had fallen upon Israel, had fallen upon Judah. It was a terrible situation. They were ruled by this evil queen. Everybody knows her name. Her name is Jezebel. Everybody has known a Jezebel in their life. Amen. So, so during this time, it's a great drought, but God now begins to move. And the first thing that shows up when God begins to move, his hand. Now, in the text, we don't really see, prior to this, we see a little bit of a confrontation uh, uh, with Elijah and, and Ahab and so forth. I won't get into all that today. But from this point, once the hand of God begins to come, begins to manifest in the heavenlies, now in the spirit, the hand of God now, the Bible says, is on Elijah. Did y'all catch the parallel? First, there's a, there's a cloud, the shape of a hand coming in the air. The next thing you know, the Bible says the hand of the Lord is on Elijah. See, we must understand that the hand of the Lord is something particular, something specific. See, God illustrates himself in these different symbolism. The hand of the Lord represents a part of God, a nature of God, a ministry of God. The heart of God represents something about him. The face of God represents something about him. Amen. The face of God represents the glory of God. That's why the Lord told Moses, you can't see my face. What did Moses ask to see? His glory. He didn't let him see his face. But thank God, because of Christ, we now can see his face. See, many teach that you can't see the face of God. They don't know what Jesus has done. Jesus has removed the veil. The purpose of the veil is that when Moses first built the tabernacle, the Bible says he put a veil over his face. Then later on, they put the veil in the tabernacle. But the veil started covering Moses' face. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that through Christ, the veil has been removed. It, he's not just talking about the veil of the tabernacle, but the original veil that covered the face of Moses. Now we can see the face of God in the face of Jesus. Praise God. Now the hand of the Lord is something special because Things had been going on. They still knew God. Matter of fact, Jezebel portrayed herself as a prophetess. And what she would do, she would intermingle things. She took pagan rituals and integrated it with Jehovah worship. A lot of what people do today who claim themselves to be Christian, but they integrate all this other stuff. Amen? There's no such thing as a, as a, as a Christian soothsayer. There's no such thing as a Christian psychic. Come on, somebody. There's such thing as a Christian prophet or prophetic, but not a psychic. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a step further. There's such thing as a Christian mystic. Some teach that mysticism because of the, I, I'm going to divert for a moment. I'll come back. That mysticism in the early Catholic church, what happened is these mystics, they considered themselves prophets, would talk about their visions and their dreams. This actually is recorded in, in early Catholic church. But the problem was they were seeing Mary and those kind of things. 